Without second and third options, Jalen Brown and Chris Tapps Porzingis, Boston overtook Philly in Philly for the number one seed. Next man up, godfather Al Horford, took on and fulfilled the challenge of neutralizing Joel Embiid, holding him to a season low 20, but it did take getting injured. University of Colorado legend, the Buffalo Derek White, combined with Jason Tatum for 24 in the fourth quarter alone, while the assassin Drew Holiday was a game high plus 16. The Celtics being top three in all of offensive, defensive, and net rating, the man who shockingly declared Boston as unstoppable, and a lot more that you can't miss are on their way. But just 9.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're a hoop fan, make sure you hit subscribe. 37-year-old Al Horford tallying five blocks and clamping up the reigning MVP with a wide, low center of gravity stance and constant pursuit of the ball, you can bet contributed to Embiid saying post-game that the Boston Celtics are the best team in the league. That was an eye-popping statement from Joel, given his Sixers had just beaten Boston exactly a week earlier, not to mention just owned the league's best record. How Horford kept Embiid under wraps reflected Boston's last two playoff runs, where he's guarded Giannis and Joel for nearly 400 possessions combined and held them to under 39% shooting from the field and under 17% shooting from three-point range. It's bewildering that since being 2007's third overall pick, that after all these years, Alfred Joel Horford Reynoso is still considered one of the world's best defensive big men. Tatum gave credit to the Godfather postgame, stating that Horford's quote unquote, like my favorite teammate I've ever had, the ultimate compliment from JT. Unfortunately for Al, the man suffered a left big toe sprain in the W. Good news is, He's currently listed as probable for Friday's in-season tournament matchup north of the border. As it always is, the health of Al is going to be make or break for Boston come the playoffs, given he can lock down the opposing team's top player. Speaking of top players, minus JB, JT would form a tandem with D. White, who played the entire final frame, and the two would obliterate the last 12 minutes of action. After DeAnthony Melton's three cut it to a one-point game, Derek would get those points right back with a spot up in Melton's grill before on the very next possession switching onto Harris out of this DHO and swiftly shuffling to shut him down. He'd then continue to put the team on his back with a floater to extend it to six. After Philly got it back to one, the relentless bald Mamba would strip Embiid before finding Tatum up the court for the and one, hit a spot up deep range bomb, then drive, draw, and mid-air overhead kick to find Tatum, who goes to his patented celly following the game ceiling triple. What a win. On a separate note right quick, last vid we heard Porzingis detail his evolving chemistry with Jalen Brown, but the roster's other new all-star in Drew Holiday also seems to be vibing with JB. Um, the other day, uh, Jalen Brown called you an assassin. Just kind of wanted to get your reaction. We've had some battles. Um... I feel like he knows my competitive nature. He knows uh, I don't back down from anybody. And uh, what somebody can dish out, I can dish it right back. So um, I think just from just based off of experience, he knows that uh, the energy and the competitiveness that I'm going to bring um, on a night and a night out basis is going to be something that you can always count on me to do. So I appreciate him saying that because Honestly, he's one of the best players that I've, I've played against in my life, one of the hardest ones to guard. Against the organization where he built up his career in, the board getting from Drew and Philly stood out as the man was the only Celtic to snag at least 10 rebounds. The 33-year-old out of UCLA is posting a career-high 7.5 boards per game, a mark that's currently second among all point guards just behind Luka Doncic and just ahead of another product of UCLA in Russell Westbrook. An even more concerning aspect about them for future opponents like my Raptors on Friday is not only that Boston was missing Brown and Porzingis, but they could have easily had better performances from the supporting cast. For example, Sam Hauser was just 2 of 8 from 3 on Wednesday in Philly, but Hauser's 44.8% three-point percentage on 67 deep range shots throughout the season is the highest percentage in the NBA among the 39 players who've taken at least that many shots. For reference, Steph Curry's second best, 
With Big Al being forced to grace the starting five given Porzingis was out, Luke Cornett excelled in his role as the first big off the bench, leading the game in field goal percentage by making all four of his attempted shots. But it was Delano Banton leading the team in bench plus minus as the former Raptor rebounded the ball five times in under 10 minutes. Banton is however behind Peyton Pritchard in the rotation, who was directly behind Delano as a plus seven. Pritchard chipped in five, which included a timely triple, but it's the advanced stats that prove he's an under-talked about contributor to a team that's currently tied with Denver for the best record in the association. Peyton is as of right now ninth across the NBA in net rating, making him one of five Celtics ranked in the top 10 of this stat category. With role-playing phenoms everywhere you look, like Pritchard, Horford, and Hauser, but just as substantially, the reliably counted upon shot-creating prowess at the head of the snake from guys like Tatum, White, Holiday, of course when healthy Brown and Porzingis, the most dominant part about this Celtic team is that you could see anyone step up as the number one option on any given night. You could likewise see any given role player stepping up to win you a game. Best of all, with the scoring development of the in his prime 30 year old in Derek White, next to the longevity of Horford, plus factoring in what first year Celtics Holiday and Porzingis can manufacture, and this has become a core of talent that no longer goes as far as one or two players take them like it was in years past. Proving that point about Boston's depth, the lineup versatility against a top Philadelphia team was fairly incredible, as Heisenberg Joe Mazzulla's third most used five-man lineup was Holiday, Pritchard, Svee, Banton, and Cornette, who posted a mind-bogglingly low 28.6 defensive rating when they were out there. It's great production from your third-string unit. The depth is nice. But you need your superstars to be superstars. And good news for Celtic fans is, Jason Tatum is likely the current favorite to win the Most Valuable Player Award for the first time in his career. The three-time All-NBA player, four-time All-Star, All-Star Game MVP, and Eastern Conference Finals MVPs, 29, 9, and 4 averages on 64% true shooting while making the highest percentage of shots from the field by far of his seven-year career. Paired with the fact that Tatum's leading the team with the league's best record in points rebounds, and steals per game, then taking in that voter fatigue clearly factors in with Embiid having won the award over Jokic last year, and Tatum's got a strong, albeit very early case for MVP. There's a bunch of other early contenders that you could rightfully feel free to rock with, but I want to know if Tatum's the early MVP frontrunner in your opinion. Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by the end of the year earn free merch of their choosing, so make sure to leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to my guy Christian Moore, who says Boston is definitely the way too early favorite to win the championship. They've played much better than anyone expected this early in the season. They'll only continue to get better as they build chemistry throughout the season. They have the size and athleticism to play with Denver, and they've had the 76ers number since the process began. They're also the only team that currently has a top 5 offense and a top 5 defense, all while still figuring out what works best with their new pieces. Great take right there. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.